day two, see us. And I'm here with P on the showroom floor. It is nice and shun sunny uh, compared to the usual right. rain, which was, it was pouring and pissing down for the past two days, which is terrible. Uh, and we've got a busy schedule ahead of us. Okay, so we are in showroom two. I see a lot of cars already, so that is a good sign. And I'm trying to figure out where the numbers are, which you can sort of see from up there, but usually we get lost. Which number are we looking for? Oh, nice. Wow, look at that car. All of these futuristic cars. It's kind of like the Geneva car show, but a lot bigger, a lot bigger. So our editor has given us the wrong number. So uh, once again, Pete and I are wandering around trying to figure out where we're actually going uh, because the numbers that people give us and the numbers that are actually given are different. Never heard of this brand before. Here you go. Look at this. Can we, can we go to the port and charge our products? Our challenge has been digitizing our 3D content, so now with the new AR features, you can take that same you know, idea, that same product, but walk around from it. So we just came out of a panel discussion about augmented reality. And I think, Pete, you and I, because we go to so many conferences and so many panel discussions, uh, it's, it's very difficult to, to teach us something new, right? There's nothing in there that really yeah, so is, is it, groundbreaking. No, no, there's no wow factor. There's no wow factor. Uh, so we've decided to leave the panel discussion and go to our next meeting. I think the whole point of CES is that CES is for the consumers, right? Uh, not, not just for the consumers, obviously. They're allowed to obviously have a walk around and, you know, find stuff. Um, need to go and have a look at that. But, uh, yeah, obviously, a lot of, for the journalists, there's lots of, like, behind doors stuff that you need to get, get into. Right, the panel discussion isn't the one, it's the behind the door, no, no. behind the doors scene stuff that we need to figure out. So, uh, should we ask them where the press So, can you hear the conversation? Yeah. Nina, can you hear it? No, I can't hear it. You can't, you can't hear it? I can't hear it. That's amazing. So, Pete and I, we just tried the most incredible thing in the world, right? We weren't prepared for this. We've got this new thing where you can listen to audio without needing any headphones, any wires, anything really at, at all except yourself. Yeah, virtual headphones. And uh, I, I was filming you and I, I loved it. Your face was really like... But what? It's weird because it works. It's yeah, and we were we were just talk, we were just walking around the floor saying like, oh well, you know what? There's nothing really groundbreaking for virtual augmented reality. But this, I see the potential for virtual reality in cinemas, for example. But all sorts of different bits and pieces, just where you need audio. <laughs> While Pete is uh, <laughs> doesn't want to be on camera because I've been filming him too much, I just want to quickly say that. Uh, I'm going to go on a little bit on a feminist rant here, but uh, a lot of the times when I go to these things, it's mostly Pete and Kevin that get spoken to, uh, and the, most of the people who talk to them are, are men. So there's a lot of a kind of like me being on the side. Male type of bravado. Thing. There is a male bravado thing going on, and it's a little bit. I get it. It's a little bit annoying, but uh, there's there's nothing you can really do about it, and. Things like people going by and saying, oh, I didn't want to disturb your filming for such a pretty, beautiful woman. No, it's not about that. It's about you've been in shot and uh, just say sorry. There's no, there's no need to mention the fact that there's a pretty woman there. I'm using my phone uh, Astro Reality app and align it with the model itself. Then the information of the moon shows up. So we just came from Astro Reality, uh, which uses um, 3D printed models of objects and then uses augmented reality on top of that to basically educate you about things. So for this one they had the moon and space and I love moon and space. But they might be well, doing they had, things... they had more than that, they had the whole solar system. Yes. But they, obviously it was only the moon that they've done is a really big detailed model. But they're going to make uh, Earth and I think it was Mars into a yeah. bigger model. But they're also hopefully going to be doing things like uh, uh, dinosaurs. They're also, right. yeah, trees. Are you going to be doing that you can take uh, your phone and like look at a plant and tree and you can find information about it, but apparently that's still too complicated for uh, what, for how artificial intelligence and our phones work, so 
Yeah, so yeah. now we're heading over to... Uh, to the press room. To the press room. I thought we were going to the hotel. Where John no. was. No? No. Oh, okay. So we're headed to the press room to do Woo. some work. Woo! And Nina's going to take out a few ankles with her uh, bag. I, I'm carrying this around. Because uh, I, I don't want my back. I'm a, I'm a young young woman and I don't want to become like a crippled crippled man. Right, let's go out the door. Out the door. Okay. So we just experienced an absolute nightmare because uh, we were just in the press room. The whole of North Hall had no power. Uh, the whole of Central Hall had no power, no Wi-Fi. South Hall had power, but the press room didn't. South Hall had power, but the press room didn't. So we were essentially stuck waiting in the press room trying to figure out what was the best thing to do. It's ironic that at a tech conference, you go to a place and there's no power and there's no Wi-Fi, right? And that, <laughs> I mean, apparently... It's expected now. It was, trend it was trending, they went on the news, and uh, the uh, the reason why it would work was apparently because it was raining. But did you see any rain today, Pete? It's been misteringly hot and sunny today. It's been nice, hasn't yeah. it? So hopefully it doesn't happen again, because otherwise we're in big trouble. Uh, and now we're off to Dump VR. Excited to be launching at uh, CES, our XR platform, which really kind of revolutionizes the distribution side of our business. So Pete and I, we just finished at John. We are very, very late for everything else, mostly because uh, what John had to showcase was actually pretty amazing. It, basically, they've got a new platform where uh, all of their films, which uh, are 360, can be put onto almost every type of headset. And today at CES, they announced their XR platform, where uh, they've partnered up with VTime, who we interviewed yesterday, Medical Realities, and Sky. So uh, what this does, it enables uh, media companies to put up shows, figure out where everyone is looking at their content, how long they're looking at the content, information about gays, uh, when and where everyone's watching it, um, upload various types of codecs or formats for, I can't remember, some ridiculous amounts of 360 cameras. And then they've got a special thing for bandwidth, so if you've got bad bandwidth, you'll be able to uh, still see some of the best quality. It's just a very easy way to put up content uh, for various types of platforms. So you can choose like PlayStation VR, you can choose Mixed Reality, Oculus, Vibe, and there's no hassle. That you don't just get to choose to have the XR thing, but you can also choose to have it as an add-on to an existing platform or application that you already have. I think this is pretty exciting. Uh, I think a lot of people have been waiting for something like this. And uh, now we're off to Westgate Hotel to, uh, to go to our next meeting. I should probably add that I was also the only woman in that room. I think it was like six or seven men, and maybe one woman who helped me through the door, but uh, it was mostly just guys. And I think that's absolutely fine. We spoke to them about the VR Diversity Initiative, and they do have a few people who will be very helpful and can help out with that, so that's good. Some of our audio technology needs uh, tuning for the specific headset. But that's the good thing about Direct VR, that works with any headset that you put in the phone. All right, Pete, so we just, we just finished, what was it? For scale one. Four, scale one portal, four, four, scale one portal yeah. four legs. Scale one portal, four legs. I think so. I think so. Uh, which was a sort of a virtual, more like augmented reality thing where you push bubbles with yeah, 3D glasses. Yeah, yeah, 3D glasses, uh, projector, and... Uh, a Kinect, a an Xbox. I didn't think it was virtual reality, to be honest. Like, it's kind of there. It's kind of virtual interaction. Okay, so point, and then choose. Yes, a simple expression. So it's just to understand um, the consumer behavior. I just stole a bagel from a hotel suite. We just came from 22 <laughs> at the Venetian. Uh, afraid we missed Dell VR for good, but we are now heading off to Servius. We're a little bit late. Um, but what did you think about the whole, what they had? Like, it's strange that there's a company that goes from virtual reality into something else, right? Well, no, they want to obviously branch out, but after making two escape room games, they're then going to making AI for They didn't retail. just do escape room games, they also they, did events and other stuff, right? Yeah, they did just two escape room games. Right, yeah. 
That's uh, all you care about. Skate room games. Nobody breathe, nobody move, just fall on the floor. Fall on the floor. <laughs> One thing that we are, uh, Studios is really passionate about is that we're a bunch of gamers. We really want them for people to try it out and give us their feedback. <laughs>